All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for coming. This is From Disabled Veteran to Full Stack Drupal Developer. My name is Edmund Dunn, and I am now a Full Stack Drupal Developer. Um, I retired from the U.S. Army in 2013, and after some searching about, uh, found that being a web developer, and specifically in Drupal, uh, was the, my path forward. Uh, I work for uh, at Design Group. We are an agency that works uh, with mission-driven organizations, uh, often in partnership. We provide strategy design and development, working with organizations uh, that are mission-driven, doing work that matters. So the start of my journey, I started uh, enlisted in the United States Army in 1992 between my junior and, uh, and senior year of high school and I shipped out for basic training in uh, the lovely paradise of Fort Jackson, South Carolina in June of 1993. And let me tell you, basic training in South Carolina in the summer is a hot mess, literally. <laughs> The, yeah, I don't think I've ever sweat so much in my life, but and anyway, the, um, I enlisted at, to be a linguist and an intelligence analyst, and following basic training, I was sent to the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California, which was completely different from Fort Jackson, and after 18 months there, I graduated as a Russian linguist, and then was assigned to a unit in Germany uh, where I spent three years. Um, during that time, I deployed to Bosnia. Uh, we started our deployment in December of 1995 when NATO troops first entered Bosnia. It was a good thing that we were there, um, seeing the results of the conflict and the devastation was not easy. Um, it's still not easy thinking back about it. Um, but I am glad that we went. Um, one of the reasons that I did join the Army was I wanted to help people. And we had the opportunity in Bosnia. I deployed to Bosnia one more time in 1999. Um, and then in 2004, I deployed with the U.S. Navy into the Western Pacific, uh, supporting operations there. And those were my deployments. Um, I was fortunate never to get deployed to Afghanistan or Iraq because they didn't need Russian linguists. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the, I will say that the soft skills that I learned in the Army, things like written communication, um, things like how to accept criticism constructively instead of taking it personally, um, and the skills in analysis that I was trained in and critical thinking are all skills that I use every day in my job. Uh, it's a huge step uh, up to have those skills. Um, and most veterans, if not all veterans, uh, have received the same or similar training uh, because the communication skills are important and they train us in how to communicate. Uh, although sometimes communication can be a little um, more blunt than people are used to, but it is what it is. Um, I retired out of Fort Meade, Maryland uh, in 2013, and uh, after 20 years. Uh, I never thought I'd do 20 years, but I did, and I look back on that time with no regret. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the world. I got to see a lot of the world. Um, and I got to work with international partners from all over the world, uh, which gave me a unique perspective into different cultures, different peoples, different places, and how they work, uh, how they think, the food they eat, uh, things that we might not think are uh, unusual to other people are unusual and vice versa. Things they don't think are unusual, we do find unusual. My transition out was um, 
not easy. Uh, it, it's not easy for any service member. There's always a struggle to define what it is we're going to do. What do we want to do after our service? You go from a life where everything is controlled. You don't even have to worry about what clothes you're going to wear because I tell you what to wear, what uniform you're going to wear for PT, what uniform you're going to wear to go to the motor pool to do weekly maintenance on the trucks. They tell you all of that. And out in the civilian world, it doesn't work that way. The transition is supposed to be made somewhat easier by something all the services run at all the bases, and it's called the Transition Assistance Program. It is, the one I went through at Fort Meade, Maryland was, it was okay. Um, they tried to cover too much information, and most of it was not information we needed. And that was noise in our in the transition and I after talking to vet, veterans from other services that transitioned out at other bases that noise uh, exists at all of them and everybody found it equally as unhelpful as I did one of the things I don't really cover is the VA or Veterans Affairs um, the VA has a lot of programs that are there to help veterans figure things out after the service, whether it's things with health care, with disabilities, um, or with programs like vocational rehabilitation, is, which is the program that I went through to become a web developer. Um, there are also veteran services organizations, um, the American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, there's many others. They also provide help. Um, in most of those organizations, it depends on who you're working with on how helpful they are, but a lot of them do provide assistance. Uh, the reason I went through the vocation, vocational rehabilitation program is I injured my back uh, pretty badly while I was in the Army, and it, it's, I have had three surgeries on it, um, soon to have a fourth, and I cannot sit or stand for long periods of time um, without a great deal of pain. And that's why you see me sitting in this chair. This is one of the few chairs I can sit in comfortably uh, for any length of time. Um, I work at home, um, and I have a picture later in the slides, in a zero gravity recliner, and I have a monitor on a very long arm that swings out in front of me, and a keyboard that on, a, on a swivel desk that swivels out in front of me and lets me um, more easily work and I can sit in that chair and work for eight hours without a lot of pain, which is good. Um, I did a couple months after I, I got out as a government contractor. Um, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like it. Uh, I think I'll, mostly because I was missing that sense of belonging that I had in the, in the Army. And I did quit and we had some savings and my wife told me let's just take a step back figure out what you want to do what are you going to enjoy and I was had called my bank about something I can't even remember what it was but the representative on the other end it was a veteran and he'd gone through vocational rehabilitation and he's like hey have you heard of voc rehab I'm like no what's that and so he told me a little bit about it and so I applied and was accepted and they provided everything I needed. Uh, they helped me figure out what I was going to do. And they provided uh, computers, books. They paid tuition for me to go to school. Um, at the time, coding boot camps weren't an option, so I went to the local community college through the web development program, um, which took a little bit longer than a boot camp was, but uh, the result was just as good. Uh, and um, I also got a living stipend while I was in that helped with expenses. And that program is underutilized by most veterans because they just don't know it exists. And then the transition to pro assistance program, they didn't talk about it. Nobody mentioned it. And most veterans getting out have some sort of disability that they're dealing with, whether it's a physical disability uh, like me or a mental disability like PTSD uh, 
And this uh, vocational rehabilitation can be used by, you have to have disability, but it doesn't matter what kind of disability you have, they'll, they'll help you get set up. And they do more than just educate you. Um, they, if somebody's restricted to home and they can't leave home, they'll help them set up a home business. Um, and so it's a great program. Um, one of the reasons I'm, I like speaking about this and I've chosen to speak about this is also to reach out to employers about how they can help. Um, right now, there are probably somewhere between one and two million open positions in tech industry in the United States. Everybody is chronically short and it's not getting any better. And there is a population of individuals that just don't know what it is we do or how to get into it, um, where, you, where to get started, um, what all the different types of jobs, positions, et cetera, that are available and what those jobs entail. And so something employers can do is they can reach out to, if there's a local military base, they can reach out to the transition assistance program. And they can also, uh, through the VA, they can reach out to their regional vocational rehabilitation office. Um, the VA has broken the country down into regions they have regional offices. Every regional office has a vocational rehabilitation office. And the social workers that work in those offices are overworked and underappreciated. There's not enough of them. Well, they can't keep the positions filled. Uh, but in a prospective employer coming to them saying, hey, we want to help is of huge assistance because it takes a little bit off their plate. Now they know who to call. They don't have to figure out who to call. Um, hiring fairs are helpful. Um, hiring Our Heroes is a big organization. Um, the, I believe it's operated by or under the auspices of the, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And they do both in-person hiring fairs and virtual hiring fairs all over the country. And they have, you go to their website, and they have a page for employers where you can register with them. And then through that, you can become eligible to attend those hiring fairs. And those hiring fairs are also a chance for service members getting ready to get out to ask about what it is you do and what these jobs and positions are, entail. The last thing is just be willing. Um, I'm going to speak some more about accommodations, but be willing to accommodate veterans with disabilities, whether it's a physical disability, whether they need special hardware, special furniture, doesn't matter, or a mental disability like PTSD. Those things can be accommodated. And just be willing to work with them and figure out what can be done to accommodate them. I've been fortunate um, at Atten Design Group where I work, they are very accommodating to my needs and I basically have to ask for something and I, I can get it. Um, and I just have to explain sometimes why, like how is this gonna make things different. But if you're willing to help uh, and listen and give those accommodations, whether it's, you know, a, a special chair or just letting a developer who has PTSD from his time in the service just work off in his corner. Um, it will all make a difference. Things that I found um, especially helpful, um, I was lucky uh, because the community college was very well resourced. They had a very diverse staff of adjunct professors um, who were all working in tech. Um, the, 
for the most part, most of my classes were development based classes, so they were work, they were developers. Um, and I connected with them and took the time to get to know them a little bit and I found those that I felt that a connection with and they kind of um, they became mentors to me in a lot of ways. Um, a couple became long-term mentors um, that I would reach out to uh, many times and that just that networking um, with them made a big difference uh, because it helped me understand all of the different types of development you can do whether it's front end back end full stack uh, whether you want to get into DevOps it I didn't know what those things were and these professors and mentors helped me understand that um, I also joined AIGA uh, because I knew that being part of a professional organization gives you access to additional resources and it also gave me access to people uh, more people that were working in the industry that I could ask questions of and I could go to class to classes that they had um, I did a couple portfolio reviews through uh, AIGA and all of that helped me get to where I am it helped them get me ready the The mentors that I had um, on both development, um, I also took some design classes and I had a mentor there that made things a lot easier because I always had somebody I could turn to and ask a question. And to have somebody that is willing to answer those questions, and whether it was a career type question, like what does a front end developer do? Um, or a question on, okay, I'm working on this JavaScript application for this class and I'm stuck. Can you help? Um, having people willing to answer those questions and to work with me and made a huge difference uh, to me. And I don't think I would be where I am today without having had the mentors that I had. Um, Internships. I think the biggest frustration that most junior developers have is finding a job. So you'll see job listings. We're hiring a junior developer. You need two years of experience. Okay, that doesn't help. Um, in my mind, that's not a junior developer. So how do you get that experience? Well, one way is through internships. And one of my uh, one of our adjunct professors in my class worked for a small um, e-learning web development uh, agency in Maryland where I was living named Da Vinci Interactive and I asked I said hey are, does, da, does Da Vinci do internships well it turns out they do and it turns out that the now owner of the company got started with the company as an intern and so he kept it going and they always had one or two interns at any given time and they were paid internships which was huge huge and I went from a summer internship which I got college credit for to a non-credit internship until I finished school and then once I finished I got a full-time position and that's how I got my start and that's how I got that experience I also interned with a freelancer um, who I connected with through a group called PTSD Chat. On uh, They do most of their work through Twitter, just helping people out with PTSD. And she ran, volunteered and resourced a website to help share resources on. And so I helped run that website and develop features for that website. And just gaining that experience at the same time knowing that I was helping other veterans was very fulfilling uh, in a lot of ways. Um, I did, going through the community college, uh, get two associate's degrees at the same time. Um, I had to take, I had two programs that kind of ran in parallel. One was web development, one was web design. I ended up getting a degree in each because I had to take four extra classes. And my caseworker was like, go for it. It makes you more marketable. Um, 
I will say now that I am at best a mediocre designer, but the things that I learned taking those classes in that program make me a much better developer because I understand what I'm looking at. And I can see things too as I develop a site that might stand out to me and say, oh, maybe this shouldn't be here, it should be over there. Or maybe this picture should be smaller or bigger or maybe we can break this content up a little bit. Um, things like that help. Um, and like I said, it was four extra classes and spread out over two years. Um, the length of the program wasn't length. I didn't have to stay on an extra amount of time to finish those classes. We were able to work them all in um, and I walked away with two degrees. And so I now have three associate's degrees and a bachelor's degree. Um, and you know, degrees don't necessarily matter. Um, in my case, my last two associate's degrees were just a way to get the training I needed to get me started. Uh, but be open to that. Look for it. See if your, you know, if the, if the, if the school has that uh, possibility, uh, because it is definitely something worth looking into. Uh, because it does, it makes you more marketable. Uh, and easier to find a job. I also did a lot of work marketing myself. Um, I took, uh, in one of my design classes, this was a, a print design class. Um, my final project was my resume. So I made up a really nice graphical resume um, with some graphical elements in it. And I designed they're essentially business cards. I call them contact cards because I wasn't in business um, to hand out at conferences and in meetings before I got, before I had a job. And um, they were circular. Um, I don't have any anymore. I, I wish I did, but uh, people saw those, especially when I'd go for interviews, and it helped me stand out a little bit because it didn't fit in the stack of business cards. People don't think about stuff like that, but it, 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 it makes a difference. The last thing was accommodations. And I didn't know, my first semester, I didn't know that I could even ask at the, at the college for accommodations. And I ran into another veteran and said, hey, you should go talk to the accommodations office. I'm like, what's that? Well, it turns out every college and university by uh, the ADA has to have an accommodations office. And they have counselors that work in those offices that help students with special needs, whether it's physical disabilities, mental disabilities, those with some kind of uh, learning uh, issue, uh, maybe somebody that needs extra time to take tests. Um, in my case, my accommodations were that I could leave class early if I needed to um, without having to worry about anything. I had if I needed to stand up and walk around or take step out of the classroom because of my pain, I could do that. Um, I also got electronic versions of all of my textbooks. And those of you that have been to college know that textbooks can weigh quite a bit. And not having to carry around 50 pounds of textbooks to all my classes, again, made a huge difference. And so I was able to load them all as PDFs onto my iPad and so I had all my textbooks on my iPad. And none of that stuff I would have known I could even ask for um, if that veteran hadn't said, hey, go talk to them. And then they were able to ask me the right questions so get, because I didn't even know what to volunteer. I didn't know what to say. They were able to ask the questions and figure out, hey, would this be helpful? Would electronic textbooks be helpful? Well, yes, they would. Thank you. Um, and so the other side of accommodations is accommodations at work. Um, legally, an employer cannot ask you about your disability uh, through the interview process, and you should not volunteer that information. Uh, for me, I'm kind of in a special category as a disabled veteran because for all government positions, I, as a disabled veteran, I get bonus points uh, towards getting hired into the, one of those positions. And a lot of companies will also uh, 
provide, kind of give you a leg up if you're a disabled veteran. Uh, but that's as far as I go. I don't talk any specifics until the offer letter has come in. Um, but once it does come in, then I start talking about accommodations, and that's when we talk about special chairs, desks, monitors, the setups that I need to allow me to work. And I have not had, of, well, <laughs> of the two employers I've had so far in this, uh, in this field, neither has pushed back on any of the accommodations I've requested. Um, there's been some discussion on like the best way to accomplish what I need, because sometimes I don't know how to accomplish it. Um, I've spent some time with those occupational therapists figuring some of this stuff out. Um, and uh, once I figured out exactly what I needed and I could say, I need to order this monitor arm, my company was like, okay, you know, send me the, the, the details and two weeks later I had the monitor arm. But again, those of us with disabilities have to advocate for ourselves. We have to speak up and say, hey, I need this accommodation and good companies will work with you on that. Here's my contact info. Uh, feel free to write it down, share it out, uh, spread the word. I have started a Drupal veterans, car, uh, veterans group on groups.drupal.org. Um, I'm hoping to use that to get veterans working in Drupal uh, involved and getting other companies involved to kind of help spread the word about what it is we do in tech and how can we help. And we have some postcards um, with that information, that group information. So um, I think Janice has some of those. Um, and it's got the information about the group. Um, and it's a good place to ask questions. And no question is stupid. So ask, and I will answer to the best of my ability. I also reach out, uh, I have made myself available through LinkedIn to mentor veterans. Um, I've had so far three come to me saying, hey, I'm getting out, or I just got out, and I don't know what to do. But I saw your information, and what does a web developer do? And just getting into that conversation, explaining it, answering their questions, giving ideas of where they can get the education, um, if they want education, um, or maybe some of them just want to go to a boot camp. It doesn't matter. I can help them find that information and also explain to them what it is a developer does. And last but not least, uh, if you come by our booth, or you can use a QR code, um, register to win an iPad or a set of AirPods. And now, please ask any questions. Yes. When you were in vocational rehab, uh, what made you choose to be a developer and what did they provide to you? Uh, when I started off in voc rehab, um, I actually started going to graduate school to become a social worker and after a semester uh, I realized that I could not sit in an office because of my back and so I went back to my caseworker and said this isn't going to work and I explained why and she said okay and so I did a couple of those uh, aptitude tests uh, the same kind that like high school guidance counselors use and one thing that came up was writing code um, I can't remember exactly what they called it, but it was, they didn't call it the, the developer, right? It was, I think it was programmer, which is kind of outdated. Uh, when I was in high school, I had taken some computer science classes and enjoyed them. I got away from that in the Army. And then, so I saw that pop up and I was like, oh, this, this has possibilities. And they provided me computer, printer, external hard drives, uh, a Adobe subscription, uh, to Creative Cloud, um, any book or resource that one of my professors would recommend, they would pay for. 
So if my professor said, hey, this book would be a good book to have, just to have and read and keep as a resource, they bought it for me. So they provide everything that you need. People don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's also a stigma attached to being disabled um, in the army, and I, th I think this is true in all the services. Uh, there is the, an attitude of you suck it up and drive on. Something hurts. You take a couple 800 milligram Motrin and you just keep going. And while you're wearing the uniform. On a, you know, if you're out on an operation, you, you got to do what you got to do. You got a job to do. But a sergeant major that was a good friend of mine told me that the military is a machine and everybody in the service is a cog in that machine. And cogs break. And so that's why they, just, they, they keep it going. Fresh people in, broken people out. And Things have improved a lot in the last 20 years when it comes to veterans and resources for veterans. And now the challenge is getting the word out. But things like LinkedIn are making a huge difference. And I know I'm connected with several other veterans on LinkedIn, one of whom is a veteran's voice. He's got an official position with LinkedIn. and. He goes around advocating for veterans and how to help them find careers, new careers. Uh, some, you know, some veterans will be coming out of career fields that easily translate right across, and they really enjoy what they're doing. So, I uh, think like maybe IT would be a, a good example of that. And they they like working the, with all the networking and the hardware and all that, and so that's a very easy transition for them to do. Um, I could have transitioned into working for NSA. I didn't want to. Um, it, I worked there while I was in the Army, and I didn't want to work there as a civilian. But there aren't a lot of positions for intelligence analysts outside the intelligence community. And so that's where I ended up. But if spreading the word through speaking engagements, through online engagement, helps. Um, I'm going to do it. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, no, it's it's a good question though because there is a way. I mean, they have to be willing, though. That's the thing. You, know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And so, in my case, I couldn't do a physical job because of my disability. And even though I would have loved to, have, I wanted to own my own race shop, building. Mini Coopers for racing. Um, I took some classes and stuff to head in that direction, and then I hurt my back, and so that was out. And so I had to be open to a new career field. And so the, I think for older veterans, it's a little harder just because they're of a certain generation that is not. Uh, necessarily anti-tech, but they don't really understand it and how it can be used. And I think in that case, it's, it's, it's a discussion with them to kind of show them. And it doesn't mean sitting down and on a computer and saying, this is what it is. It, it, it's talking to them and saying, hey, you know, this is, this is something you can do. This is something you can, you can learn. I mean, a lot of these boot camps run for, for 12 weeks. 
And even if you're not eligible for something like vocational rehabilitation, there are boot camps that, you know, you don't pay until you get a job. And I know there's been some controversy surrounding that. Um, and that means, that just demonstrates that you need to do, do your research. Uh, but, you know, I'm willing to talk to any veteran about what I do. And I think veterans talking to other veterans is going to help uh, because it, we speak the lingo. We speak the language. And one thing I will say, too, is since, you know, Drupal is kind of an, is, is an international community, this problem exists everywhere, every country. And it's something that can be solved in much the same way by just talking to the veterans and saying, hey, here's what it is you can do. And also talking to potential employers and saying, hey, this is what veterans can bring to the table. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much.